strategies we always give to our clients is that any annual fund program needs to have a, a comprehensive matching gift strategy to go along with an annual fund program. And uh, HEP has been a great partner for many of our schools in helping them uh, grow their annual fund program. So uh, with us today is uh, uh, you know two uh, gentlemen that I've had the privilege of working with uh, uh, with Partners of Mission at Bishop Fian, as, as John said, uh, Chris Servin and Chris Copley uh, have done a magnificent job at uh, not only building a comprehensive advancement program at Fian and successfully completed a, a very significant capital campaign, but uh, have done really important work in growing their annual fund and raising uh, significant dollars through the uh, through the matching gift program. So I'll turn it over to to Chris and uh, and and Chris and John to lead the way. But again, uh, thanks to all of us for uh, joining uh, the webinar today. Well, thank you, Larry, for that introduction. Appreciate it. Um, just a little quick background on matching gifts and who is HEP. I, we have a lot of people here today who are just starting out as new people in matching gifts and have new responsibilities. Just a little background on HEP. We've got about 5,000 clients. Um, and about 15 years, we've been doing matching nothing but matching gifts. And uh, we've developed a lot of great clients where we get our, a lot of our great ideas from how to make products better, and how to you know, increase um, matching gifts for everybody. Our database today is around 17,400 companies. We have a pretty large staff um, that just goes out and you know, finds new matching gift companies and programs. And we monitor, talk with the GEs and the, you know, the uh, Exxons of the world every day to make sure we've got this thing as accurate as humanly possible. Um, as you know, most of the matching gifts, you may not know actually, 83% of gifts are matched one to one. Some are two to one, and in the case of like Exxon, ed ed education institutions, it's three to one. And uh, Fidelity, um, which actually is Bishop Fian neighborhood, does a two to one. So it's all free money and uh, there for the asking. And, uh, so what we hope to cover with you today, um, and I think you want to hear mostly from Chris and Chris, uh, but you know, what's the matching gifts, some statistics, I'll give you some of those. How do they create awareness at Bishop Feeing? Uh, what happens in the second year, I think, of past donations? How can you go back and take advantage of donations that were given last year as well? So there's two sides to that, I guess, uh, looking at last year's donations and looking at uh, can you match the ones that were given last year? Um, how do you find match and edge gift eligible donors? What do you need to do on your website? And how do you how do you promote this internally? So that's what we hope to cover with you today here. And uh, so I'll explain matching gift. I think everyone pretty much knows it, but this is an employee benefit. Um, not all matching gift programs are the same. I mean, not everybody will um, match to, um, you know, a, a, a church, for example. But they will match to a food for the hunger program. They will match to a seminary. They will, 90 per some odd percent of them, with, will match to educational institutions. Um, they don't like matching to athletic programs, maybe of colleges. So each one of these. Uh, companies out there has a little different wrinkle in their program, hence why you need the database and why you got to keep track of who they'll match to. Um, so I think I covered the match ratios, um, but usually there's a maximum per year um, that people can give, and that's usually set by the company. But if you got a, let's say, a $30,000 gift from somebody, you can tell them to break it up into give me 10 this year and matching gifts, 10 next year and 10 the following year, and you can get the whole thing matched. So major gifts and matching gifts do go together. There are deadlines. You've got to be aware of them, and hence another reason why you need to know when you have to have the paperwork in by at each institution. It is different. And I will mention spouses and retirees can be matching gift eligible. About 10% of spouses and retirees can be match eligible. So if you have a retiree out there in Arizona or Los Angeles um, from General Electric, that, that gift can be matched. And so 
depending on what area of the country you're in, if you have a good retiree base, uh, that's certainly a plus for you. So just some more statistics here, and I'll turn this over to Chris and Chris. Uh, on average, one in 10 gifts is match eligible. That's an average uh, that we've gotten from all kinds of nonprofits. And 17,000 plus companies, it changes every day because companies buy, sell. Um, but on average, the good news is we're adding a net new company per day. And that's, that's great news even during, you know, this economic times haven't been that great. We continue to add, and that's that's good for the future of matching gifts. Um, about 50% of the Fortune 500 have matching gift programs, and estimates are around 1.3 billion in matching gifts to all nonprofits. And just to tell you what some of the big folks do here, I know this doesn't necessarily apply, but ExxonMobil sends a check to LSU once a year and Texas A&M for a million dollars for their matching gift programs. American Cancer gets around 12 million. But here's a Susan Coleman of Maryland, which only has five full-time employees. And um, they they do, you know, roughly $100,000 a year just to, then I certainly wouldn't make them on the small nonprofit side. The average major gift for colleges and higher education is $740. And let's see, about 4,000 companies match volunteer time. So that means if you have somebody volunteering time at your community um, charity, uh, Verizon will write them a check for $750 for their 20 hours of service. So keep track of uh, your volunteers, um, particularly if you have a lot from electric companies, uh, banks, you know, Morgan Stanley's, the Merrill Lynch's of the world. One interesting last fact here is that a telephone survey by, done by Ruffalo Cody shows that 7.1% of the alumni contacted were matching gift eligible. And they, but interestingly, they contributed 10% of the revenue. And geographically speaking, I think I might have a, you can, um, the distribution of those companies is throughout the country. So if you were not, town that doesn't have a major corporation in it, you still can do quite well with matching gifts because there are still offices there for, you know, um, different companies like Merrill Lynch, Morgan Stanley, uh, you know, those type of things. Uh, so you'll, you'll still have tons of matching gift people in your town there, just a question of finding them. So I don't think any of us will turn down free money and I, uh, you can have a nice impact on annual funds through matching gifts, uh, but you know, usually we find lots of people leaving lots of money on the table. And I, the key word is, I think, being aggressively. I don't think enough nonprofits aggressively follow up on it. And, um, you know, you need to be aggressive to follow up to eke out those nice uh, incremental returns increases. So why do companies do this? They want to help. They want to boost employee retention. They want to show corporate America in a positive light. Um, and it's, there's some tax and financial considerations as well. As I mentioned earlier, does it make a difference where you are? I know we've got people on from California today and you know Oregon and different places around the country, but these are the case districts. Cases involved with higher education. They're the largest trade group, certainly the most respected. But this is a breakout of matching gifts for that survey that I mentioned earlier of 703,000 pledges. Where did they come from? And as you can see, the geographic distribution is pretty much nation, national in scope. Not much difference between the smallest and the largest. Um, case one being New England, you can see this charts uh, later. We'll, we'll, we will make available a copy of the PowerPoint and the um, presentation today so you can get a chance to study this. And if you have any questions, please send that, send that along to us. So I'm going to turn it over this juncture to Chris and Chris and let them tell you how they 
created awareness, you know, within their constituency, and they can tell you something about their environment there and their institution. So, Chris and Chris. Thanks, John. Thanks very much. This is Chris Copley. I am uh, Director of Leadership Gifts at FIAN. Um, creating awareness is a very important piece of this whole program within both the group that you work at, you know, within advancement and also within the donor community. If you step back and look at, uh, you know, when you started working as a new employee somewhere, you were concerned about your salary or your hourly wage, your health care benefits, dental benefits, maybe 401k or 403b, but nobody goes through the employee handbook, which could be 100 pages, to find out whether or not they're uh, working for a matching gift company. So many of the people you will be approaching and discussing this with don't even know that their own company uh, will match their uh, donation to an approved nonprofit like Bishop Fian. And I want to give you a brief example of that. We um, received a donation from an engineer at Raytheon in Portsmouth, Rhode Island. And he'd been donating for a number of years, and we called him, or I called him and said, uh, Joe, uh, you know, we'd like to uh, request or ask that you consider filing for a matching gift against you, you know, for the donation you just gave us. And he said, what do you mean? Raytheon does not match donations that we make. I've been working here for 17 years, and I'm telling you, they don't match. They don't do it. So I said, would you consider looking at an email that would have some information that may change your mind on that? He said, yes. He looked at it, he came back, and he said, I'm sorry. I've been here for 17 years, and I was fully unaware that they would match it. And he filled out the matching gift documentation. So a lot of what you're doing is creating awareness within both the donor community and the advancement group. Sure. Uh, this is Chris Servant, president of Bishop Ian High School. Uh, just to amplify a little what Chris said, first, uh, for those people listening, um, I am a teacher by trade. I've been at Fian for 41 years. Uh, I taught English for the greater majority of that time. I eventually moved into a position in the advancement office uh, as the first advancement director, then later principal, and now I'm the president. Uh, that being said, so you're, you're not talking about a businessman. I'm blessed with the good fortune that Chris Copley is a businessman who sat on my board and when we conducted an unsuccessful, and I emphasize unsuccessful, search for an advancement director, Chris said, hey, look, Chris, uh, I'll, I'll give you a couple of days a week. I can help you out here. So he came into this office, and now we're in the middle of a capital campaign uh, in, in the worst economy in 75 years. And we're, we have a million-dollar donor who hasn't fulfilled one of the pledges he's made, and, and, and we're really scratching. And um, I'm going to first preface it by a comment that became sort of a mantra around this office for the rest of the year, which is 2010. You don't know, or we don't know, what we don't know. So creating awareness starts right with the person at the top. And you're looking at him, Chris Servant. I was not aware. Larry Fury said in a meeting here, he was our counsel for this campaign, oh, gee, you ought to consider exploring a little something with, with uh, matching gifts. Well, first of all, I, I, I didn't realize that high schools Catholic ones, no less, qualified for matching gifts. I thought this was something that dealt more with basically large, if you will, institutions, and particularly public ones. I was wrong. So what happened is we actually started, and as Chris said, we simply said, let's take a look at everybody we have who's made a gift, and let's go backwards for one year and take a look. So we found out, first of all, we got this information from HEP that identified, and they specifically do it, which is very helpful, these companies, and there were over 7,000, will match gifts at high schools. And it was astounding. Now, some of the names are a surprise to us. Others were not. Large companies like Exxon do not have matching gifts in high school, despite the fact that one of our top graduates is an employee there and very generous of the school. He's not going to be able to with a match. On the other hand, we had a number of people. We are in New England and were surrounded by several Fidelity locations. So we went back and taking the, the HEP piece, we literally matched up, if you will, people where they worked if you will, with the matching uh, gift form. We didn't even do that electronically at first. We did that the old-fashioned way, printing out sheets, looking at people, where do they match, and trying to do that. That being said, we have gained a little more sophistication, but we worked backwards. We went to people who had already given us gifts. Now, we're not asking for gifts. They've given us gifts. We're now going back and simply say, are you aware of the fact that uh, you work in a matching company? As Chris said, some were, some weren't. More shockingly, people said to me, Chris, is Bishop Fian a 501c3 organization? I said, absolutely. Well, they, they didn't know that. So we actually created our own awareness by actually making a letter. Chris helped me form the letter. And we actually put it out almost as a press release to these donors who had already given to us, past, they were graduates, past parents, and present parents, saying, we've got great news. We just want to make it clear that Bishop Fian has been recognized as a 501c3 organization, which we always were. We're a 51-year-old institution. 
and as such, we qualify for matching gifts to your company. Then we started tracking things backwards, making the people who weren't aware that we were matching gifts, uh, that we were allowed matching gifts, making people aware that their companies were, and we started, if you will, working forward. And that very first year, we picked up probably twenty-five to fifty thousand dollars in matching gifts. And it actually even created among my board, one member of my board said, I'll create a challenge gift. Anybody who matches for the first time, I'll match. And so he stepped up and said, you know, if you can get people, so here we are on December 1st, and we're calling people who haven't even made gifts to us now, who work at matching gifts companies, said, hey, an alumnus, one of our graduates that says, he'll match dollar for dollar up to a certain amount, uh, a gift that you give. So it was a win-win-win situation. From that little initiative, we actually garnered $35,000. We had the money they gave, the money that was matched, and then the money that the actual a chair of our board did. So I'd like to say the awareness starts right at ground zero. You, as a person, need to be aware of what's going on. Do you know your database? Do you know all the companies that match? You know, and not only that, we also have a problem, if you will. We went back and realized that once people leave Bishop Fian, as graduates of past parents, we are not maybe as in tune as we should be. We have an excellent database. But that being, we're not often really up to date on where they work. And that takes a little bit of networking, a little mining, a little digging. But if you can find out where they work. So when they enter the Bishop Pan, we make them identify on an application. If you want your child to come here, where do you work? And we even go far enough to say, who are your grandparents and where do they work? Because many grandparents are still today working. But that is a critical piece because if you have where they work and it's the wrong place, you're not pursuing them. So that's something you have to be constantly increasing awareness on. Next slide, John. OK. Uh, ways to create awareness. And this is real key. And Chris uh, touched on a little bit of this. But gift acknowledgments. When someone makes a donation to FIAN, we always send them a note saying, thank you. We really appreciate uh, your support. If they work for a matching gift company, we also let them know that the gift is matchable and uh, give them very explicit directions on how to file for the match and ask that they do that. So embedded in the gift acknowledgement is a request to have their gift match, which is really key. Um, the other thing that we do, the website, and John alluded to this a little while ago, um, we have the HEP uh, lookup page embedded in the Bishop Fian website. John, maybe you could talk about how that works a little bit. You're closer to that than I am. Sure. Uh, basically, what we do is, together with your webmaster, create a page, which is a matching gift page. And on there, we put a little box in, basically asking for a, your donor. Or you can use it internally as well. Um, you type in a company name, Verizon. And it comes back. And we'll show you an example here in a little bit. Um, but it comes back and says, yes, Verizon matches one-to-one. -one. Um, you know, they, you know, the deadline is uh, March 31st to get it in by, and uh, it will match up the $2,000, et cetera, et cetera. And it gives you all the details of the program so that you can talk intelligently to your donor and to prospects when you're out visiting them. So that is, we call it an e-match donor link. It's actually the only thing that Bishop Fian buys from us, I think. Maybe there's some brochures as well. but and it cost us six hundred and fifty dollars. So, just to give you some perspective on what the dynamics here and the economics of us are, but right. and we'll talk I, a little I, bit about the return on investment for that six hundred and fifty dollars that we that Fian has received. I would like to add, this is Chris Servant, that that the key for the listeners is it's got to be a drip, drip, drip effect. You need to build a culture of giving. So what happened is when our incoming freshman parents received information from me about us having an annual fund, I included in that a HEP brochure telling them these are the companies that match. Now, obviously, statistics will tell you about 85% of those brochures are going to people who don't work at matching companies. But what we also were a little bit, again, awareness. You need to be aware of the fact that a husband and wife often work at two different places. So if you have, in our case, we have 1,000 students. If we have 2,000 uh, students, we have 2,000 parents potential there. Now, some of the parents don't work, I agree. But what you find out as well is a family can make a singular gift that is matched by two different companies. Husband works at Fidelity. Wife works, if you will, at uh, Covidian. And they can both be matched. So that $250 gift ends up being $750 from Fidelity. And for Covidian, ends up being $500. So we used to include that brochure. And I think what you need to do is, uh, without you know, bonking people over the head, 
in any publication you have, whether it's on your website, whether it's on a thank you note, you need to keep mentioning the matching gift. People won't become anesthetized to it. They'll become aware of it, and that's part of that drip, drip, drip effect. It's got to be constant. It just can't just be once a year. I had uh, one person tell me recently, one of the international uh, big, huge nonprofits that helps uh, you know, when there's uh, disasters around the world, they put in the um, acknowledgment, click here to see if your uh, employer will double your gift. And they had that click, that URL, go to their eMatch donor link page. And just by putting it in the gift acknowledgment, their traffic went up on their matching gift page or their eMatch donor link page, something like 600 and some odd percent. So it's, um, you know, another way to just create awareness. You were, That's why. Uh, yeah. I, I was uh, sitting at the dentist. Not, not a happy customer, but I was sitting there and I was reading the Nature Conservancy magazine. I just wanted to show you that what some form of advertising here. This is a full page ad in their magazine and it's all about matching gifts. But uh, the big thing here, to see if this is the text that you could put in an acknowledgement, to see if your company will match t to the Nature Gifts, Nature Conservancy, click here, basically, is what they're saying. And uh, in this case, you can't click because it's in a magazine, but if you type that in, you will go to the Nature Conservancy's matching gift page, which is going to look identical to what Chris Servant has. It's, it's, it's the same page, actually. And um, so, how to create awareness. And this is the sample text that lots of people use in their acknowledgments. And this is actually Bishop Fans right here. So, let's talk a little about this. Chris, do you want to share how you guys use this and then I can jump in? So this is a replication of Bishop Fian's matching gift um, uh, page that's embedded in our Bishop Fian website. And what you simply do is where it says type employer or company name here, is that, that's what you do. You, you type it in there to determine whether or not that company uh, is a matching gift. In this case, Aetna, that John just put in there. Um, and here's the response you get. Yes, Aetna is match eligible. Uh, eligible, uh, and you have all the detail. Um, if you look where it says, it says minimum amount matched, maximum amount matched, say 5,000, total per employee 5,000, gift ratio one to one. So you know that up to $5,000, in this case, Edna will match on a one to one basis. What's really important to realize, and this is where there's some work that has to be done, is that every company is different. Some companies say you have to have your matching gift request in within 30 days of the actual initial donation. Some say 90 days, some say six months, some say by the end of the year. So you need to familiarize yourself with the company's um, policies so you can effectively communicate that with the donor so they're very comfortable with how to do it and what, what the time demands are. One of the things that we've experienced at being is there is not an infinite amount of money budgeted for matching gifts in every company. So just like you know any organization, they have budgets and they can only spend so much money. So it's incumbent upon you to get your matching request submitted as fast as possible. Get first in line wherever you can. We had a situation uh, last year, 2012, where SAP, the hard, uh, sorry, software developer, ran out of money. And so originally they were going to mail us the matching gift check in December. It was delayed until January um, uh, when they were able to replenish their funds. So I, I know that Chris here and adding to that, again, this is the non-businessman. I'm an English teacher by trade but I become a businessman because I have to. We don't have a giant budget here, but the school operates on a $10 million budget, and so therefore I'm a businessman whether I like it or not. But what ends up happening is we in the educational area work under two different things. We work under a school year, September to June. Therefore, for us, generally speaking, our fiscal year is July 1st until June 30th. Well, that's not the case. I didn't realize that. Again, awareness, ground one, Chris Copley and others we found out you know, many people's fiscal year, like in the place of committee, and this stops on uh, October 1st. And, as Chris said, the monies they distribute for uh, matching gifts is finite. So you need to, when you get a matching gift, you've got to follow that up. In addition, some people work under a calendar year, obviously. It's different. 
But I think the other thing, too, is the small thing about awareness is, and the key thing maybe we can talk about as we move along here is that you need to constantly be working on it because when we started ask telling people matching gifts, we said we're going to minimize any hurdle at all. So I've never been in a big business. So Chris Copley tells me, hey, Chris, these people are going to walk down the HR office, get the paper, and they're too busy. These people don't want to do it. They've already given us 500 bucks. They're not going to go down there. So we had Chris, for example, contact them email, make a copy of this form, and send the form directly to them right at their computer. They would print it out. That facilitated a number of gifts. It made the steps that they had to take fewer. So that was another thing, too, as well, in terms of not only creating awareness, but also, if you will, minimizing obstacles for an employee to actually help you out. And, and, and again, that's something you'll find out through experience. Now, that, that's a great point, Chris. You have to make it easy for them. Because many people now, if you think of you know, the way the economy has been since 2008, many people are doing two and three jobs. So you need to make it easy for them. To the extent it's difficult, like anybody else who just puts it aside on their desk, and will get to it someday, and someday never come. So you really need to make it easy, and we'll show you that in a second, an example of how you can do that. Next slide, please, John. Yeah, yeah I'd like to make one point, uh, sure. Chris. The, the most important thing I hear from nonprofits that we have on this page is the matching gift form. And roughly 50, 55% of them, nonprofits do provide a copy of the PDF or a link to the login where the employee can go and request the matching gift. So that's very important. That link that you see there, right on here, uh, with uh, the cyber grants, etc. You can put that in an email and send out reminders. Then again, the donor has got the copy of the form to fill out, and you want to make it easy. Now, some nonprofits even go to the extent of filling in the names, filling the whole thing out. So the only thing the donor has to do sign their name. So I, I just point that out to you before we uh, move on here. Right. Now, if you had a link, uh, let's say this was, um, which one are we on here? Um, Home Depot. This is Home Depot Foundation. Um, if that link on the previous screen was to a page, this is where you'd come to at Home Depot. And uh, they're very nice matching gift program at Home Depot as well. Earlier, Chris was talking about the inserts that you can put in to create awareness. Um, this is a copy of one done by St. Edward High School. I'm not sure where this is located, but um, very, very popular, these uh, little inserts as reminders. John, if I could comment on that one. Sure. Again, you can, many people do not realize they work for a matching gift company. So they go to this, they look at it themselves and say, wow, I do and they get excited about the fact that they can match. But a lot of what you're going to do initially with really ramping up your program is educating people, letting them know that they have this benefit as part of working for the corporation they work for. One small <laughs> little addition here, it connects with winners again. We have a small shop here. There are three full-time employees and two part-time employees. Now, maybe that's bigger than yours. Maybe it's considerably smaller. We're a small Catholic high school of 51 years. We have an annual fund that's about $500,000. The point was, Everybody in the office has been to be connected with that. So what happened is everybody has developed a very educated eye to recognizing and familiarizing themselves with where people work and is that a matching of company. We have a database, fortunately, we're able to connect, if you will, immediately. So when someone actually is working at a matching of company, we have the ability to remind ourselves that immediately when we get a gift. So if they haven't prompted us, that, that they work in a matching of company, we prompt them. And what will the nice part will be is as you condition people to do this, what happens is where I've noticed a change in the two and a half years we've been at this, not the least of which is we've got a lot of money in some pretty difficult times that we wouldn't have got, is that suddenly people are taking the initiative before you ask them. So you get the form, they send the form with you. Now I'm not saying they're doing our work, but this is in a sense a little bit of a, you know, Tom Sawyer and painting the fence. You know, you get people helping you paint the fence for you by sending the form in and signing it without even asking for it. But despite that, you're going to make darn sure that someone in the office is dedicated to following this up and checking on it. We in the early stages, I think it was Larry Fury told us, uh, we made some calls around. There was a woman in Atlanta, Georgia, who said, I'm a volunteer. I work 10, to 10 hours a week in a Catholic school, and my sole job is to track matching gifts, follow-up calls, see if they're in the pipeline, 
so forth and so on. We've seen here at FIAN, I don't care, that would justify any one of us listening to this, this webinar to pay someone a very small stipend to have them come in to do that for you as a volunteer and, and then maybe give them a little stipend because it'd be well worth every penny you could, you could uh, give them. Case in point, we were in the middle of a capital campaign. Uh, uh, one of the employee, one of our parents made a gift of $25,000 over three years. Covidian, he worked at Covidian. Covidian matches up to 10000 I was asleep with a switch. I'm not proud to say this. And we didn't, we were aware of that. We missed the first $8,333 as a match. That's correct. A one for one match. The next two we didn't miss. And we got $8,333 and we got a match of it. And we got a third gift of $8,333.34, the third gift, and a match of it. So what was $25,000 in our case, if my math is right, came out to be about 42, and it should have been 50 if the guy in charge of this place would have been more aware. But again, you don't know what you don't know, but you don't forget those errors once you make them. This is uh, just a quick example of a little buck slip. You all have, may have printers internally. We do them for lots of people, but just a little something that you can put on your solicitations, a uh, little note, sticky notepad type of thing. But uh, again, nice little reminders. So I think I, I'm going to just mention this first bullet and then ask Chris and Chris to comment on it. The question would be for Chris and Chris, really, what do you do? You're going out to talk to a potential new donor. Um, what, what do you do internally if you don't know anything much about them? Um. We try to, um, you know, do whatever we can do to dig around to find out if they do, in fact, work for a matching gift company. And there are people okay. in the office who have relationships with maybe others who we're going to visit, and we try to network a little bit. But we do try to do homework um, in advance. No, uh, no. I assume you mean John. You mean going? We don't know much about where they are employed, or you're yes. saying much about them because obviously every gift, and it depends on the size of the gift. If we're going out to ask for some transformational gift, I can assure you, we know a good deal about the person we're asking. We don't go in there right. cold. But that right. being said, when you're calling someone on the phone, which happens pretty frequently, and you're soliciting a gift for an annual fund or some support, you may not know where they work. And then you may have to be a little more direct and to say to somebody, if you will, that, you know, uh, how you get to the point of where do you work, or are you aware of the fact that, you know, that if you work in a matching of company, obviously the potential for your gift can be doubled and tripled. And in most cases, I think people, you know, it's interesting, John, and for people listening, that, that when we've asked someone to make a gift to the school, and I, I'm going to be very candid, so I ask someone, well, I want you to join the President's Society. I want you to make a gift of $1,000 annually to the school, and you'll fund. So a lot of people will say, if I give Fian, if I'm working at Fidelity, and I give Fian $350, and Fidelity matches that 2 to 1 up to 1000 I'm giving them $1,005, $50. And frankly, they... they they're a member of the President's Society. So that they, they suddenly feel, I'm getting a lot of mileage out of a, a what might be considered, in their case, you know, a modest or reasonable gift. So I think people are also compelled by the fact they're getting more credit for what they do than if they did not. And when they really had told how much it helped the school, I think they enjoy that. Right. Um, on a second bullet, John, measure, uh, measure matching gifts report on it. Right. I, uh, I uh, through Razor's Edge, submit to Chris a report how we're doing year-to-date versus the previous year by company. So right okay. now at Fian, we have 69 companies who match gifts, which, wow. is, which is pretty nice. So maybe on a quarterly basis, I sent to Chris a report on how we're doing versus previous year. Right. Um, and Chris talked earlier about the, the next, second bullet from the bottom, create a culture of matching gifts. Everybody in this office is aware of the matching gift program. So people ask when on the phone with somebody, they, they try to confirm where they work, try to confirm where their spouse works, um, because that all matters. And the example Chris gave before where we have a guy who works at Covidian, he's about to give us a $1,000 gift. He married a woman who works at Fidelity, who matches two for one. So the $1,000 gift that he's given us, coupled with a Covidian match and a Fidelity match, is $4,000 all into fee. Huge for us. So that's why it's so... Uh, pragmatic for everybody in the office to be sensitized and have us develop that cultural matching gifts. And one little thing that we do here is that when I open the mail, we don't get 500 pieces a day, we may get 20 pieces a day. Chris Irvin opens the mail, immediately sees it's a matching gift. 
I make sure that I can make a, uh, a copy of it away or have our administrative assistant get rid of it. Chris Copley, Chris tracks this in a three-ring binder, alphabetically arranged A to Z. Who is made, who has made a gift? Who is a matching gift? You need a tickler file to make sure you do not let the time after they made the gift expire. Again, my case of Chris Servant losing a, a matching gift of $8,333, and in all due candor, for us to raise that here is unbelievably difficult. It's very challenging. So you need a tickler file to make sure it stands off. And it can be as simple, you don't have to be a high-tech guru. Now, yes, when a person's data is entered, we make darn sure we, we connect it. We use something called Razor's Edge by Blackbaud out of South Carolina. I'm not selling their product, but it works for us. But we have the ability to connect, if you will, people who are matching gift companies. We also are in a school setting here, and those people listening are not school settings, museums, whatever you do. You need a vehicle to see if you can update where your uh, constituents work. At FIAN, we have reunions every five years for classes. So what happens is our alumni director is releasing a, uh, pardon me, our PR person is releasing a letter a little later this month, and it's going to the classes of 68, 73, 78, 83, and so forth. And basically, it's telling people a pre-populated form saying, this is, it's a reunion year. This is the information we have on you. If you'd like to be included in the mailings, please let us know. Return it. And on that form, we give them the data that we have where they work. And I'll bet for most of our graduates, I'm going to say conservatively, probably half of it is wrong. Not their home address, but where they work. And my point is that most people will take the pre-populated form, correct it, and send it back. And even if we get 30%, which is, by the way, is pretty good, we're going to have significantly more accuracy than we have now. And in addition, we're going to find out people who have been giving gifts to us, work at matching of companies, and we've never utilized it. So it's a case where you need to have a vehicle to try to gather that information, how you get it. And that's got to be unique to you, not unique, but you've got to decide how you can do it as a school or a museum or whatever you do. Right. Okay. Okay, John. Any. Any more? Nope, nope not on that. OK. Uh, I think this is an example of a little note that you, you send out, right, uh, Chris? This is we talked about in a previous slide, uh, acknowledging okay. a gift. And this is simply us saying, thanks for your gift to this woman who works with Covidian, telling her that it's a one-for-one -one match. And could you fill out part one of the form, again, making it easy. Part one is on the slide you see there. And just send it back to us. And then what we'll do is fill out part two and send it in. That, in, in effect, validates the gift, making it um, OK for the company to send a check to FIAN. And again, it's just making it simple. Make it easy for them to do it. Because if you don't, if they have to put a lot of thought into the process, they won't do it. They're too busy. They can't do it. So right. I, I can't emphasize that enough. You have to be clear, unambiguous, very concise, and make it easy for them. Next slide, John. Yes, OK. I guess this is a response from the donor. Right. Thanks for making it so easy. So here we go. This is the um, this is the proverbial bottom line. So Larry Fury told Chris and I over the summer of 2010 about HEP, right? And so what we did is we looked back. We said, what what's going on? What were our results two years before going to HEP, and what are our results two years after? So from September of 08 to the end of August of 2010, we had $60,000, 106.38 matching gifts. Since then, with uh, Larry Fury's help and, and John Wright's, $221,123. So this slide should prove to you that this works. Uh, a little caveat, to be honest with those people who may have heard me say, we are not a giant shop. We think we're pretty proud. We'd like to do a little better, but a half a million dollars annual fund. We're not talking capital gifts, but in this matching gift, we were completed in capital campaign that ended in June of 2012. We had some capital gifts in there. In the range, as I said, we had some matches up to 10,000 EM, like the one I referred to. But again, I'd say that didn't make the majority of gifts, but that pushed that total up a little higher. Uh, and it really has, it has absolutely made a difference in the economy, and it's still going on. I don't know what people are feeling in California Oregon, but people are still playing things conservatively. Every time you can double a gift, why not? Great. Next slide. Super. I guess these are suggest some suggestions, right? Right. So Chris talked about this before, but this is something that worked for us. 
Some companies allow you to go back for a year or six months or three months for donations already made and arrange for a match. So what Chris and I did right away when we found out that we had something here, that this was really going to work, we went back and tried to capture matches from previous periods. I forget what number we actually totaled, but it was significant, very, very significant. Um, again, the fourth ball down, I won't go through each one of them. The fifth one down, most donors are not aware that you are 51 C3. You have to let them know. Next one, most donors are not aware of employees matching gift program. You're going to find that a lot. Um, so you need to be aware of that as well. I'm going to clarify that fourth ball. The people listening to this to say, oh, boy, you know, we're not the Boston Museum, you know, fine arts. We aren't, you know, uh, a giant uh, shop. I'm going to tell you right now, do not underestimate the quality of a shop volunteer. Obviously, in a school setting, we have parents who have a lot of, if you will, knowledge. We got some people in here. What happened is we have two databases, and this isn't a complaint, that w they, they interface but not as quickly as we'd like. So we have something called Retica, which is an administrative database for schools, unique to schools, and we have Razor's Edge, which is really the cutting edge in advancement. And what happened is when our parents would come in, we had all this information entered on, on uh, uh, Retica, but we wanted to transfer it to us over here in Razor's Edge. And what occurred is we want to make sure we get that information as quickly as we can from incoming parents. Well, I brought a parent in here, and basically, until we got this thing interfaced, we were manually going through and entering 20 or 30 people a day. And basically, I was actually physically going through, taking a look at the brochure that John gave us, and matching up, this is a matching gift company or not. This woman didn't know they're matching gift companies. I just simply I said, this is. She went through and made all the connections in here, and it was worth every ounce of time she spent, and she's put probably three or four days a week, maybe an hour a day, and did a volunteer. Now we have a little better system. The point is, do not rule out the old, you know, just simply rolling up your sleeves, hard work, because it can happen. And volunteers can make that happen. And you can use a volunteer if you have to, following up, if you will, if you can make them specialists, have them specialize in making those annual, uh, those matching gift follow-ups. And, and in addition, one thing Chris does very well without really causing a firestorm here is that he actually contacts the company and inquires if you have these people in the pipeline. So if we have five people at Fidelity, just want to check, we've had five donors here, if you will, their applications are in the process. Yes, they are, Mr. Copley, blah, blah, they talk about that. It's worthy of doing things. And whether you like it or not, it's reality. When you make a phone call like that, sometimes your papers move to the top of the pile. And they just, you know, when someone gives you a phone call. Right. It, to amplify what Chris said, just about 100% of these companies don't handle the matching gift process themselves. They outsource it to a major call center uh, where a company called Easy Match works or Truist. And you call them, and they'll give you the status of the match. They'll say, okay. This gift from Fidelity uh, for $3,000, the check will go out March 1st. And you have to constantly follow up on it because sometimes it doesn't go out and you have to check on it. But the companies themselves do not uh, handle it. They outsource it to the call center um, because it's a lot less expensive for them to do it that way. Next slide. Um, this is a very important document, and uh, I would suggest you print this out. Chris and I look at this a lot, 16 Steps to Matching Gift Success. I want to go over three with you. I'm not going to go over all of them. Number three is create awareness. We spoke a lot about that, but handing out those pamphlets or those uh, brochures, and, um, highlighting the web page for the lookup page, and any of your correspondence is important, but I would definitely look at number three. Number 12, check this one off as well. Number 12 is important. It's very similar. Call it proofreading. When we release a publication here to our constituents, it's, we say nothing leaves the office with a minimum of three people's eyes looking at it. Well, my point is that if you've got five people all whose eyes are looking for, is this a matching gift? Has this person matched? You've got the administrative assistant doing it. You've got the person opening the mail. It doesn't have to be you. I open the mail. If everybody looking at it, you're bound not to, you're going to have far fewer errors and far fewer omissions. So the culture is that, and you've got to inform your constituents through publications, almost every piece, informing them about it. Again, it's a drip, drip, drip effect, and over time, you will see a difference. Right. And the last one is number 16. You have to have a process for following up. So if somebody makes a gift, um, you get the matching gift form, you validate the form, you send the form in, and then you do the follow-up to this call center for whatever company uh, the match is going to. You have to follow up because if you don't, things fall through the cracks from the call centers 
a very, very overworked, so you have to be following them a lot in, in developing relationships with them. So a follow-up is very important. Next. I think we've kind of covered this, but <clears throat> these are some suggestions uh, how you can get some more education. Um, I think we just want to turn it up to say thank you to Chris and Chris and Larry for a great session. I think one of the last questions somebody sent me electronically here was, thanks for a great program today. So I think that sums up, uh, we really appreciate your experience and your your uh, knowledge on the list, matching gifts. Thanks, Chris, Chris and Larry. You're welcome. And, 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 thank you, John. Uh, There's a couple of questions. Uh, I'll just take a, we'll just take a couple. But uh, one was, there's, is there a program like this for Canada? Yes, there is. You can call us for details. Um, yeah, the, the compliments are just rolling in, guys. Uh, great job. Uh, sorry for the beeping, but um, I'm not sure where it's where it's coming from. To be honest John, with you, I'm gonna. This is Chris Servant, and two final little little things. We did a couple of creative things here. So if somebody's listening to this, they said we've already done all this. We're kind of underway. What can you add that's a little creative? Chris Copley suggested that we took our top ten, but it was really three people, of which companies that were doing a lot of matching for us, we arranged for a social event locally, if not at the company, down close to it. We invited everybody who gave the matching gift, brought them together, and literally have some, if you will, cheese and crackers or soda or whatever it is, these people invited them to come within maybe a half hour after the work ended so they didn't have to leave town. It ended up resulting in everybody having a great time, committing themselves to continuing the match, and we found out there were people working in the company that we didn't even know about that were graduates of our school. So, you know, so it worked out really, really well. So that's a little small social event. Secondly, in publications, we started to list, I got this idea from my college alma mater, what harm does it do to list the top 10 matching gifts companies for the school? And it's not uncommon to do it, but it's a little pride thing when you work at Covidian or you work at Fidelity and you see a company number one, but more importantly, you're working at Fidelity, you're not matching a gift, and you say, hey, we're the number one matching gift company? And then again, it added to that awareness. We did this, we have a book called, a magazine called The Cornerstone for alumni and parents. We publish twice a year, included in something like that. It doesn't have to be just in the annual report. Right. Two, one last comment for me, if I could, John. Sure. The financial impact on your organization can be significant. We talked about being at 22,000. Just last year, from Fidelity alone, we picked up $32,550 of matching gifts. So it, this program does work. It's a result of a great piece of advice from Larry Fury, followed through by John Wright's organization to help us out. It does work and can add a lot to your bottom line. So uh, thank you for allowing us to present here today. Yes, well, thank you, everybody. Thank you for all the folks who were able to attend today. We appreciate it. We will get a copy of the PowerPoint and a copy of the presentation up, up on our website, and we'll send you an email on that. And if you have any questions, uh, we'll send you a little email where you, where you can call and contact us to uh, ask any specific questions you may have. Thanks again, everyone. Appreciate your Thanks, time John. today. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, Chris. Thank you.